What is up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor back with another tutorial for Get Licensed Driving School and today we're going to talk about steering control. So I get the question all the time, does it matter how I steer in my driving test or can I steer with one hand in my driving test? Do I need to have my hands at 10 and 2 o'clock on my driving test? Or my instructors told me that I must have my hands on the wheel at all times or I'm going to fail my driving test. So let's clear that up firstly. On your category B, so that's from learner, provisional to full driving license, what your examiner is marking you on is your control of the steering wheel. Are you in control of it? Is the car going where you want it to? And are you safely in control of the steering wheel so it's not slipping or jerking out of your hand when you're going around a corner or over a bump? So if I get someone who comes to me who can already drive, just needs a few brush up lessons to get through their driving test, who holds the steering wheel with one hand and the gear stick with the other hand, which is very common. Lots of people drive like that and it's okay, as long as you're in control. I'm not gonna teach them how to steer differently. It's gonna take, why? You can already steer, like why do I need to teach you how to steer again? So when you first start driving lessons, your instructor should teach you how to steer at 10 and two o'clock, the police push and pull method. But if you can already steer, it's not a requirement of the test to be able to do it in any other way. So what I'm gonna teach you today is the preferred method of steering. This is how you should be taught to drive when you first start your driving test. But if you can already steer in another way, don't think that it's a requirement. I mean, some people like to wind down their window, especially on a sunny day, and just have one arm out of the window. It looks cool, makes you look like Tom Cruise at a Top Gun or something. Great, you steer like that, that's your thing. But if you start to become a little bit out of control or you start to cross your arms like that and you need to just maybe have a little bit more control, that's when I'm gonna jump in and say, hey, let's try the 10 and two correct position and steering safely. So let's talk about how to do the 10 and two o'clock push-pull method. This feels a little bit clunky at the beginning, but there's a couple of reasons why we do this. Firstly, in some circumstances, it might be dangerous to cross your arms over the steering wheel. So if I steer with one hand and my hand is now over the steering wheel, in the event of an accident and an airbag deployment, the airbag is gonna deploy from the middle of the steering wheel at around 200 miles an hour, and that will force my hand into my face, which won't be very comfortable at all. If my hands are on either side of the steering wheel, my hands get pushed back and my head is cushioned. Okay, so that's one benefit to the push and pull steering technique. Another benefit to the push and pull steering technique is that if I'm going around, let's say a 90 degree corner, I'm gonna need roughly one whole turn on the steering wheel to do that. If I'm not pushing and pulling and my arms go around and get locked in like that I can't now apply any more steering but I've only steered half a turn that's not enough to get around a 90 degree corner so now I'm going to go really wide potentially go too wide for the corner crash into something that's not going to be good so if I push and pull I can apply as much steering as I want to and I can easily steer back under control no problems with that Point to note, if you just need to steer a little bit, you won't always need to push and pull the steering wheel. If I'm just gonna take a small change in direction, I can just move the steering wheel with my hands like that. If I'm going around a corner though, that's when you wanna start feeding the wheel like so. So let's learn how to do that. Firstly, let's say I'm gonna steer right. I'm going to pull down with my right hand. My left hand meets at the bottom and I'll push up with my left hand and meet at the top and continue and then when I wanna Steer left, my left hand pulls down, only one hand is gripping at a time, then my right hand pushes up, left pulls down, right up. Okay, and then back again, pull, push, pull, push, pull, back again, pull, push, pull. And it takes a little bit of practice to get that smooth. One thing that I see learners do all the time at the beginning of this is taking small chunks out of the steering wheel. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Now look at the speed of my steering wheel. If I'm going at, say, 10 miles an hour around a 90 degree corner, that's not steering quick enough to get your car around. We have to go around two miles an hour for that speed of steering. So make sure you start at the top and work your way to the bottom. I've just done half a turn in about half a second. And again, and again, much quicker steering than if I'm only taking small chunks out of the wheel like this. Okay, let's take big chunks, top to bottom, top to bottom, all the way around, and that steering wheel's moving pretty quick, okay? And that's all really there is to it, guys. It's not hard, it's not difficult, but it will take practice like anything with driving. At first, it's not going to be easy. At first, you're gonna be tempted to just 
steer however you want to and that's okay while you're still learning but please stick with your instructor when he's trying to tell you how to push and pull first of all try it while you're stationary don't try and practice this for the first time of going around a corner because you've got too many things to think about you've got to think about your pedals the mirrors the signal and what's coming at you down the road so first do it while you're stationary push pull and then take it around some corners the first time you do it around some corners it's going to be difficult because now you're focused on so many other things persevere with it stick with it because this is the best and safest way to steer from when you first take your driving lessons all right so now i'm just going to drive around a little bit and show you what i'm doing with this steering wheel sometimes it might be necessary to push and pull sometimes it will be necessary just to turn the wheel a slight amount when i want to make a small change in direction and then i'll show you guys that it is still safe to steer with one hand you won't get penalized on the driving test on the category b driving test if you're doing an advanced driving test like i am or rossbar or the police driving test they're going to want you to steer push and pull so even if you do steer with one hand and you're comfortable with that it might be worth trying the other method just so you've got that in your arsenal as well let's go prepare observe signal and move okay so i push and pulled there because i wanted the steering wheel to move quite a lot and i've got quite a 90 degree sharp corner ahead of me so starting at the top pull push pull and then back again pull push and back okay so let's say i just need to take a small change in direction i'm only going to move the steering wheel and keep my hands stationary where they are let's say i need to duck into this passing place i can just move the steering wheel and then out of the passing place just move the steering wheel it's only a small change of direction i don't need to push and pull for that if you want to you can but it might be easier to maintain full control of the steering wheel by keeping both hands on the wheel so let's turn right here mirror signal and i'm going to push and pull because this one's a tight corner there we go and in and back simple let's turn left and i'll show you that again mirror signal i'm going to start with my left hand and pull push pull and then back again, push, pull, push. So I'm going around a slightly bendy road here. You can see what I'm doing with my hands there. The road bends slightly left and I'm just gonna, there we go, easy. If you're having trouble with how much to steer, your instructor might refer to the steering wheel as a clock face. So we've got 12 o'clock at the top, six o'clock at the bottom, three and 10. So if I ask you to steer five minutes to the right, that'll be about there. 10 minutes to the left let's do that around this silver car boom right there okay so that will make it easier to find out exactly how much you should be steering another thing that might help if you're struggling with taking small changes direction just point your fingers up like that and exactly where you're pointing the car will go this only works at slow speeds first gear nothing more than that try that so that you can work out how much you need to steer to move around slightly on a quiet road so i'm going to turn left here mirror oh. Okay, here we go so i'm going to turn left here and same as normal let's push and pull pull down push up and back again it's important to note that you must steer back before you're parallel with the road think about this if i'm only straightening up my wheel once i'm parallel with the road how long does it take a couple of seconds to straighten my wheels up in those couple of seconds if you're going at 10 miles an hour your car is going to now be veering in towards the curb so it's important to remember that while you're taking a corner you should start to think about straightening up your steering wheel just before you become parallel with the road so i'm going to turn right here and let me show you what happens when i only take small chunks out of this steering wheel i'm going at 14 miles an hour it's taken a lot longer i wasn't a sharp corner at all it's taking a lot longer to get my steering wheel around but if i just pulled the steering wheel right around i could have been a lot sharper and a lot closer to the right on that corner so i'm going to turn left and this isn't a very tight corner at all so let's have a look at this nice and easy 15 minutes to the left and then straighten up the wheel okay so i've shown you how easy it is and the benefits of pushing and pulling it's definitely the safest way of driving there's no doubt about it if you have an accident and you can never tell when you're going to have an accident it might not even be your fault it might be some other driver who's driving wrong driving incorrectly just speeding down the road and is not in control of his car the accident doesn't have to be your fault so you can tell yourself you're the best driver in the world but it's never guaranteed that you are not going to get into an accident so you should always try and steer in the most safe way and drive in the safest way possible 
but there's no requirement for you to steer with two hands, so let's have a look at how to steer with one hand. I always get all my students to practice steering with one hand, because how are you gonna steer around the corner and change gear at the same time if you can only steer with two hands, okay? So it's a good idea to practice steering with one hand. Not all the time, but for as long as possible, so that you're comfortable steering while changing gear. So let's say I'm gonna go around this bend and change into second gear while I'm traveling around the bend. I'm gonna need to start steer and then carry on steering, change to second gear, and then continue turning. So let's try that now. Turning left, mirror signal. I'm going to change into second gear on the corner. So I'm gonna start steering second gear and carry on. So because I'm comfortable steering with one hand and I've practiced that, I was okay with changing gear on that corner. Can be a little bit daunting changing gear on a corner at first because you're used to steering with two hands and that's the most comfortable way because you've been practicing it. But steering with one hand is perfectly safe, perfectly normal and you should be practicing it because you're gonna need it. While I didn't need my left hand on the gears, I put it back onto the steering wheel so that I can have maximum control on the steering wheel while I was turning back. And while I'm just going in a straight line, I'm gonna relax. I've got one hand on the steering wheel giving me excellent control because I'm only going in a straight line. And my other hand is resting on the gear stick. Again, it's not a requirement that you hold your steering wheel at 10 and 2 o'clock. Some people like to hold it at the bottom, especially on the motorway, because then your hands get less tired because you're just holding the steering wheel for a long time on a long motorway drive. You can hold the steering wheel at the top, one hand at the bottom, two hands. See, this is a myth that I really want to dispel. The fact that you need to steer with two hands, because people get stressed about this a lot. Oh, I find it easier to steer with one hand. I've been practicing steering with one hand. Now my instructor's telling me to steer with two hands, or I'm worried that I need to steer with two hands and I just can't get the grip of pushing and pulling. It's complicated. It requires you to do two things at once with your hands, and multitasking, some people just can't get it, and that's okay. Some people don't know left and right, that's okay, and we use different methods. Like, you can ask your examiner to point for you, left and right doesn't matter it's not a test of you need to drive the perfect way there's 101 different ways to do everything in life right there's 101 ways to do parallel parking if you don't get on with the first way your instructor gives you ask for another way there's 101 ways to steer as well I'm steering with one hand and talking with the other hand is this safe do you guys feel safe do I feel safe would my passengers feel safe 100% so if there's a way that you're doing it already and it's safe and in control then it's going to be okay on your driving test guys Hope you found that useful. If there's anything else I can help you with, I mean, I get asked that question all the time and I wanted to do a video to help you with that, steering control. Being in control of the steering wheel is what counts. Everything else is just added bonus. But remember the safety reasons why we push and pull. So this is not a preferred method. This is the preferred method. If there's anything else I can help you guys with, comment below. I obviously read through all of the comments and I'll be commenting back with you guys. Follow me on Instagram, at Francis the Instructor. Follow at Get Licensed Driving School and I'll catch you guys in the next video.